So today for Lent 2022, we are looking at Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. And today I'm going to read this out. And I hope that you'll join me as we write out our scripture today. So I'm doing a voiceover and I'm kind of making some noise here. Let me get my work back out. So with Zephaniah 3.17, it's in the ESV version that we're using today. And remember that you can get your scripture writing plan at farmgirljournals.com. The verse that we're doing is just one verse, and I'm going to be sharing some things with you with some different Bibles, their commentary, and comparing different versions of the Bible. So this will be a little bit more of a study type video, not a full-fledged Bible study, but it'll give you more information into our scripture today. When we're looking at just one scripture, it kind of doesn't really give us enough information about what's going on in regards to this verse. It's important to look at Bible verses and read the scripture itself, the whole chapter preferably. Also look at the beginning of your Bible, well, the beginning of each book of the Bible. If you have a study Bible, it will give you the background, the author, the time in history. Study Bibles are really good for that. So, looking at that information, then coming back and looking at at the verses before, the verses after, that really helps to cement what we're studying. Because you can take scriptures and you can just pull things like you're pulling things out of a hat and say, oh, this is what that means, when really, no, it means something else because it was written to um, a different generation of people, but we can apply the word to ourselves. So let's go ahead and I'll read to you what I've written here. Zephaniah 3, 17, ESV. My chair is squeaking. ESV stands for English Standard Version. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. And those are three promises. When you see the words, he will, he promises to do that. So let's look at some commentary. But first, we're going to compare a few different versions of the verses. And then I've got some good things to share that I have found in other notes and commentaries. So hold tight. We're about to begin. So let's take a peek and do a little bit of a deeper dive into Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Now I have some commentary to read in these Bibles, but since we only have one verse to work with today, I wanted to take some time and show you some of the different versions of the Bible. I went to BibleGateway.com. Again, that's BibleGateway.com. And it will let you compare five different versions of the Bible in a particular verse. Whenever I'm doing something, this is really only focusing on one verse. I rarely focus on one verse because I want the context of what's happening here. And it is referring to Israel. But if you would go and read Zephaniah, see what chapter 3 is about. And I don't really have time to do that because that's more or less doing, you know, Bible study. So just rest assured that I've gone and I've looked into this. Check it out for yourself, though. Um, But anyway, so there's not really any context when you're just looking at one verse. Here, in the New International Version, NIV, it says, the Lord your God is with you. In the New King, Jer- New King James Version, it says, the Lord your God 
in your midst. We read the ESV and it is in your and it says the Lord your God is in your midst. The NASB, this is my favorite version. My church uses this one. Um, it is the Lord your God is in your midst. So the ESV and the NASB both use is in your midst. So does the New King James Version. Okay, and then over here it says the mighty warrior who saves. Well, we're going to focus on the blue one. Mighty warrior, mighty one, victorious warrior. It also can mean a warrior who saves. So it could say, instead of a victorious warrior, a warrior who saves. These are in the footnotes here for the NASB. So the mighty warrior who saves, this is the mighty warrior will save. And when you see the word will, this is a promise from God. Will is a promise. Here it says a mighty one who will save. And do we have anything different here? This is, nope, oh, nothing else there. Okay, so now we are ready to look at the green one. In the NIV, it says he will take great delight in you. In the NKJV, it will say he will rejoice over you with gladness. So he will take delight in you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And here it says he will rejoice over you with joy. So that's kind of the same thing with gladness, with joy. Then we have, in his love, he will no longer rebuke you. He will quiet you with his love. He will quiet you by his love. So here we have with his love. Here we have by his love. And this is interesting. The NASB, it says he will be quiet in his love. So I wondered, why would he be quiet in his love? What does that mean? So as you study, you'll get to where you start asking questions. So I was able to go to BibleHub.com and... The Jameson Fawcett Brown Bible Commentary, um, there was a commentary on Zephaniah 317. When it's talking about he will be quiet in his love, well, this is a reference to calm, silent joy in the possession of the object of one's love, too great for words to express. There are a couple of other commentaries on BibleHub.com for this particular verse that say this is a reference to rest in his love as God rested after the six days of creation with silent satisfaction. So you know what? This intimidated me at first. I'm like, oh, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. But you know what? He is at peace, satisfaction. So I do like that. All right. One of the things that I want to share with you here in the NASB, and I highlighted this in purple um, because it has a footnote here. He will be quiet in his love. Other ancient versions say he will renew you in his love. So this is really my favorite as I broke this down. That sounds really neat. He will renew you in his love. I like that a lot. That kind of brings my heart some peace. Okay, so now I want to read some commentary about this verse. So I'll read it again in the ESV. Kind of refresh your memory for the whole thing. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. So let's look at a couple of things. And I always say this man's name wrong, so I am not going to attempt to pronounce that. Uh, well, maybe I will. It's either Wiersbe or Wiersbe. I don't know, but whatever it is, <laughs> he's got some good stuff in here. So it says, our God, our God is a singing God. God the Father sings to the Jewish remnant entering the kingdom. This is in reference to verse 17, which we're working on. God the Son, Jesus, sang at the close of the Passover feast, 
and then went to the garden to pray. That's in Matthew 26, verse 30. He also sang after his triumphant resurrection from the dead. That's in Psalm 22, 22 and Hebrews 2, 12. God the Spirit sings today through the hearts and lips of Christians who praise God in the Spirit. That's Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. So Lent is all about preparing us for Easter. So don't just write this out to be writing it out. Stop and absorb it and look at it because our Jesus is magnificent. And I hope that you're um, being moved by some of these scriptures that we're writing this week. Well, for the next 40 days. Okay, so here, this is the Experiencing God Bible. And it says in two things, has two notes here for verse 17. It always asks a question. So this says, prepare to meet God. And the focus here is a love relationship. And I'll use my little guide here for you. God will finally establish a pure love relationship with his people. Can you describe your relationship with God as the intimacy of love? God gets joy from and sings for delight because of his love relationship. How do you and your church express the joy of your relationship to God? A couple more things. And then I've got a doozy over here. This is um, ooh, the Adrian Rogers Legacy Bible. I did a review on that last week. And oh my goodness, it's great. <laughs> All right. So when we were talking about being quiet, where he will be quiet in his love, there was a commentary in here. Let me tell you what this is. This is the MacArthur Bible Commentary. All right, so verse 17. Okay, here we go. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, and it has a cross-reference to Isaiah 62, 4, the Lord will exult over his people with gladness and song, resting in quiet ecstasy over his people, in whom is his delight. Isn't that beautiful? And so it has cross-references here for Deuteronomy 30, verse 9, and Isaiah 54, 1 through 17. All right, now I'm so excited because I'm going to share with you the commentary from the Adrian Rogers Legacy Bible. Woohoo! Are you guys ready for this one? All right, so here it is. Let's open this baby up. New King James Version. Here we are. Look, when God sings... Zephaniah 3, 17 is surely one of the sweetest verses in all of the Bible. Read it once, then read it again. The Lord God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Notice, first of all, the singer of the song. It is the Lord your God who sings over you. He is a personal God. Oh, what a privilege to say, I am his and he is mine. He is a present God. He is in your midst with you right now. Notice that he is a powerful God. Indeed, he is the mighty one. He is also a pardoning God. He saves. Second notice, the subject of the song. What does God well, excuse me, what causes God to sing? His people. Now, in the strictest sense, God speaks here of the nation of Israel. So remember what I was talking about, looking at the context of a verse, looking at the whole chapter, actually the whole book, but looking verses in front of it and verses below it. So this is the context of 317. He speaks of the nation of Israel. But in the broader sense, he speaks of all of the children of God, all of those he loves. That's why you can apply this to yourself. And what causes God to well up with so much joy that his great loving heart burst out in song? Well, it's me. It's you. He rejoices over us. And thirdly, there's the sequel to the song. 
there's an obvious implication. If God sings over us, we ought to sing over him. Look at what Zephaniah said to these people who had been redeemed. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. That's chapter 3, verse 14. Now that's a command we ought to obey. We ought to sing and shout and rejoice with all of our heart. Friend, if your salvation is so exciting that God is thrilling the angels with his great voice as he sings in glory, don't you think we ought to get excited about it? Shouldn't there be some infectious, contagious enthusiasm about the Lord Jesus Christ who has redeemed us? I tell you, enthusiasm in the house of the Lord will do as much to convict people of sin as all the preaching in the world. If God sings, we ought to sing too. And you know what? Worship is one of my favorite things. I do not have a singing voice, but I do love to worship. And I mean, there are times where I can't even sing because my heart is just in awe. Sometimes my heart feels convicted, depending on what praise song I'm singing. But worship to me is so personal and so precious. And I will never forget the day that I felt the joy to raise my hands and sing and praise Jesus, there was just, I, I don't know, I cannot tell you, but raising my hands to the Lord just brings me so close to him. And it's not an, uh, you know, anything that you have to do or anything like that. It's just there's times where I can't do anything but raise my hands and praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, it's all about surrender, surrendering my heart. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's Lent study through Zephaniah 317. Today was a little bit different with just one verse, but I hope that you'll come back tomorrow. I'm really enjoying these. Please do me a favor, hit the like button and also leave some comments below about what are you liking about these videos? What are you liking about the scripture? What are you seeing in these scriptures? What have you seen these last five days? How are they moving you? How are they teaching you? Because they're teaching me. So we'll see you soon. Y'all take care. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that too. It means a lot to me. Bye-bye, y'all.